God, I'm a fucking sorcerer, bitch. I don't pay taxes. Doop! <laughs> Anyway, so, yeah, no, that's a thing. Go and, uh, yeah. And Stormmaster's gone until we see him again when you kill the dancer. Yeah, he and does go. come back for that fight, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know There's what the one dude with the giant axe come back. Yeah. The other random summon that has no fucking meaning. You mean, the like, the Dark Souls 2 yeah, summon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who the fuck I is killed him in video 3 if you watched that video, Sam. Did you watch that video and like it on your own personal YouTube channel to give our fucking little YouTube channel a little bit of boost? Did you do that, Sam? Uh, no, you didn't, Sam. I shared, I shared it with my immediate friend group, and then... No, you didn't! I did. Bullshit, I want proof. Let me take out my phone. You Ask know what? If you're about to take out your phone, then that's enough for me. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy that if you fucking... If you I'll bluff my first bluff, I'm gonna be like, alright, I don't care enough anymore. If it was a poker, it's like a poker game, and if you call someone bluff and he pulls out a gun and puts it on the table, <laughs> I believe you. Right. Exactly, if you pull out a gun, I'm just like, you know what? I believe you. <laughs> If you're willing to go that far to justify your argument, then you probably aren't lying. Which is, of course, the ultimate way to lie to somebody. Yes, by 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 just pushing out your lie more. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the ultimate. Well, okay, that's that's wrong because that's how most people think of the ultimate Welcome way to lie to somebody is defend it like your life it. depends on it. But the best way to, the real best way to lie, is to lie and then kind of bring it back a bit. And then say, no, it's actually this other thing that's a Oh, yeah, misdirection. Yeah, yeah. Lie, yeah, and then cancel it out, bring out your second lie that's more believable. And then people are like, oh, obviously, it's the second one. It's amazing that you and I have uh, brought such a good skill into lying, because I agree with everything you just said. I have I'm group. amazing at lying to people. You should never... No. You, yeah, and Christian's a great liar. I had a really bad one. influence as a kid. <laughs> who I, well, I can't say that he was a bad influence, because he had a messed up childhood, but I had a friend of mine who was... He taught me to lie very, very effectively. And, uh... But, uh... I mean, that... that there, that's a fucking school. They teach it in uh, criminal psychology, so you can learn <laughs> how to identify when people are lying to you. Really? Yeah. That's not that's not a class in high school. Not high it? school. Not college. College. Yeah. For criminal. Well, psychology. they got paid for it then. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I do it. Yeah. But so everything after high school is you have to pay for it, right? Depends on scholarships, on all sorts of stuff. I don't mean to fucking stop this amazing conversation real quick because we're coming to one of my favorite parts of this fucking game. I was literally I... about to be like, put a pin in that. Yeah, put First a pin off. in that shit, right? Because this is one of my favorite parts in Dark Souls 3. First off, I love this area because you can see multiple... Look, there's fucking Aldrich's base right there. There's the fucking place where you fight the Watchers. Just look in the distance, you can see Dragon Shrine. Oh, look at that. You oh. can, actually. So there's the swamp. You go down there, there's the village, which would take you to that one building where the giant is shooting... That right there is where the, um, actually you can probably see the tree. Yeah, there's the tree. You know what would be right really there. cool is if you fight the tree and those branches right there would disappear. You like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, oh is, yeah. it is the now, fucking. Now check this out. Check this out. Go to the left. Look yep. down. There's Karthus right there. There's yeah, the right tomb. there. There's this tomb. tomb the tomb of Karthus. Now look further than that. There's Aerithel. Yep, you can see Aerithel. Look and then up. Look up. There's the shrine. There's Dragon Shrine. Yeah. That, that's good. That yeah. is good uh, skybox mapping. But oh, however. Yeah. Turn to your right. Do you want to see something that really, always fucks with me? always fucks with me what's up okay so look past uh fucking aldrich's place the sea what the ocean when how i, I mean like kind of what that does is like so what that does is um it, it kind of makes you just like stop right there you know what i'm saying yeah like that makes you not want to put lore into anything beyond that because it is just endless ocean which is fair because Dark Souls 2 did that. I'm not sure if Dark Souls 1 did that. I don't remember there being an ocean. No, no. That's something that's not really touched upon. But I wish they kind of did was have a sea scene. Like, I have a... I mean, you see that in Dark Souls 2. Like a water level? Yeah, but, like, you're on a raft. And you're seeing things beneath you that you can't comprehend. That's what... It's a. It's an aspect of Legends they haven't really... They don't touch upon. I would fuck with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and I... I kind of like cur that one thing in, like, uh, one of the God of Wars games where you're fighting, like, an infinite Leviathan, like, Hydra thing. But, I mean, they don't really touch upon that in this game because, I mean, it'd be, first off, it'd be hard to implement. But I always like scenes where you look down and it's just, like, an entire world of just monsters. Yeah, like swimming underneath you and shit. Well, I mean... I like, I like um, atmospheric buildups like that. To enemies, too. Yeah. Like, to have enemies that you will fight in the future be an atmospheric buildup. Like, like, like what if... What if, what if um... Oh, good example. Dark Souls 2. Everybody hates Dark Souls 2, but I love it. Dark Souls 2. When you're crossing the bridge over to... 
the um, prisoners. The prisoner, yeah, right? The, the, the fucking the what's her name again? It's been a while. This is the problem is that oh, shit. I, I, I used to be the master of all the lore, and then I I stopped playing for about two years. You know, you're fine because you became an EMT, which Last is a lot better than <laughs> you became an EMT to save people, not some asshole who knows Dark Souls lore. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, no, the, the uh, lo- last sinner, or, or uh, lost sinner. The last sinner, it's the last sinner. Or is it lost sinner? No, it's the last sinner. Someone look that up on their fucking phone. Do you have a smartphone? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's still, this part still kind of pisses me off. I, 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 I liked it because... It's it, such a fucking immediate callback to the Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1. Well, my, my problem I have with them showing up is that they, you never fight them. You never fight them again, yeah. These they, are, that, that that would too, that would almost assume that these are the last three of them. Yeah, and they, you see them again in the DLC. Yeah, they're true. still alive, and they'll be alive forever. These demons are so good at living because they just help people by transportation. They're a taxi service. It's like in the apocalypse, there being one last fucking Indian taxi driver in New York who is uh, the the one, mm-hmm. the one who yeah, who or yeah, the, well now he'd be an Indian, he'd be like an Indian Uber guy or like exactly like he's. he's Time marches on, and yet here is this one man because he does a job that is necessitated. You know, um, he's the fucking gears that move society. To, to deviate, to de- to deviate from uh, what we were talking about right now, in this playthrough, and as I have played Dark Souls one, two, and three, personally, I at this point now in one, I, I, I actually assume to light the flame, flame again. I think in one at this point that we do not have any information to make the assumption that, oh, fuck, the flame dies out, the world's still gonna be shit. I, I believe in the greater good. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know what, man? I see this world, this world is shit, but if I fuck around, I become the motherfucker that can, con- that can claim all the great souls, right? If I can claim all the fucking souls in the goddamn world through my energy and become a powerful being and then sacrifice myself, at the end, at the core of the world, I, from my own personal sacrifice death, can then bloom a whole new world. And in Dark Souls 1, that is what they tell us. However, they're also saying like, hey, all you're doing is just preventing what is going to naturally happen. That's what Dark Souls 1 says. Let me Go ahead, Sam. I'm sorry. This is why I really like Dark Souls 1 a lot, is because the first game, if you viewed by itself, is a very poignant metaphor for life. Because you have two kinds of people. You have a person, you have people that are out for themselves, which is like the fucking dog, sorry. The dark dogs, right? Yeah. So you have two people. You have like doctors and people that take really stressful jobs. Jobs where you are literally burning hours of your life to help people, right? You're like, you're saying to yourself, fuck my, fuck my life, my goal is other people. And then you have people like artists, or you have people like, people that are, that really are out for their own work. They say to themselves, the world's gonna die anyway. Why not live for that, the world that comes after? That's true. And so you have those two kinds. Really, when you break down every single mentality, you can kind of divide them into one of those two groups. People that for other people or people that for themselves. And that was kind of why I was like, like in like the idea of Halloween is like someone burning out, right? Someone not making it. Not, someone not making their dream happen. Someone not making their thing happen. They're, they get eaten up by life and they basically go insane, go through the same processes over and over. Dying, coming back. Dying, coming back. Dying, so on and so forth. Until they die for real, because... I love everything you're saying right now, but let me just finish what we're saying, because there's something I want to talk about. So, with that in mind, in Dark Souls 1, I'm all about sending yourself. Dark Souls 2, I'm very selfish. I'm a very selfish person in general. I'll buy you a beer at a bar, but I will no shit leave your ass on a fucking lime or fucking bird scooter while you puke on the sidewalk and I ride myself home, because I live in the city, baby. And I'm not about to fucking pay for an Uber back to your shitty ass place in the suburbs, 30 minutes away from the city, because that's what most of you live from. Right, Sam? Anyway, so in Dark Souls 3, when it comes down to it, there's one thing that changed my mentality, because at this point, I'm all about erasing all of history to kill myself at the end to create a new history. And then Dark Souls 3, Sam said, well, you know what? No matter how hard you erase history and how badass you become, the world will still be shit. And to be very completely honest, the world of Dark Souls 3 is fucking shit. It's so goddamn shit that religions have been brought around about how shit it is. 
So with that being said, and the reason why I'm bringing it up in this Let's Play is to justify my actions while I am playing this Let's Play. I will be taking the Lord of Hollows in this Let's Play because I believe at this point in the story, there's no fucking point to letting this bullshit happen. All your, if you if you fucking beat the game and you light yourself on fire, all you do is sit down. You fucking just sit there on fire and you wait for the next motherfucker to come through and just burn himself again. You are prolonging bullshit. Am I right, Sam? Yes. So Stop. So, with that in mind, I'm talking to you all. <laughs> Please, grant me death. The only reason why <laughs> I made this big hubbub about it just now for the past, like, five minutes is because I love the way my character looks. And I really hate to see her turn hollow. <laughs> So I'm going to spend a lot of fucking money on fucking stones to make her stay this beautiful. Because god damn it, I want my waifu to look amazing! Berserk direction there. You know, honestly, man, like, I, I stopped watching Berserk, even though I was kind of enjoying it. But because you and Ben were, like, adamantly so passionate about the manga, I stopped watching But did you the start anime. reading the manga? I have it because I told you when my cell phone gets fixed... I like to lay in bed when I wake up in the morning, and by morning I mean 11 a.m. I like to. Wow. <laughs> fuck off! Yet yeah, yeah. everyone shut the fuck up. All right, all right. We all know I have problems, but you're still my friends. One, Crawling in my skin. <laughs> These wounds they will not heal. Well, as my friend Jason Chen likes to say, "How could this happen to me?" <laughs> I forgot that whole death is pointless unless you get the fucking dark sigil. All right, so anyway, um, let me explain something though, because this actually just—it was a revelation I had. And by revelation, I mean you know this is something a lot of people figure out. So in Dark Souls One, you get two options: throw yourself into a fire and pointlessly—or no, I don't say pointlessly. Let me rephrase that. Gwen made a decision. You made the decision. Fuck Gwen. You made the decision that we're going to keep this the lore Age of Fire going. He did it for the decision of the gods. But that world of the Age of Fire isn't bad. Isn't a terrible thing. But in my mind, the Age of Hollows, Be excuse safe. me, not the Age of Hollows, the Age of Dark, at that time was a preferred option. It was an Age of Men. And even though big problems like Oyasil could be the eventual end, be I still think that when humans are, even if they're crazy, they're the top dog, that's still preferable than humans being slaves and sentient. It's a really weird opinion. I agree with that statement because I, I have pride in myself, con contrary to uh, my very uh, depreciative jokes and lifestyle. But go ahead, Sam. I agree with you. Uh, all right. So that's why in, at, at the end of the day, and also because those motherfuckers lied to me and tried to manipulate me. They did. They did lie to you in Dark Souls 1. The whole Ooh, thing is them I, lying. Well, I mean, it's, it's they believe the lie, but and, and part of it is also that you are also being manipulated, Be obviously, safe. by that evil-ass motherfucker, Kate. But in the end of it, yeah, fuck Kate. Well, I mean, but even at the same time, he's not wrong. God damn it! He's 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 manipulating you, but he's so manipulating you with the truth, as opposed to controlling you with lies or changing your opinion without even in lies of omission. But the thing is that in, in Dark Souls one and in Dark Souls two also, the path of dark is the preferred direction in my mind for man, because of just like you know, it's just we're in charge of the abyss. Things could go bad. Things go really crazy, but even Manus, if he's the furtive pygmy, which is a big if, he's still a man. He's he doesn't look like a man, he doesn't look human, and he's crazy. But he's still it's still humanity. It's still something we're comfortable with, something we know. Even if we all turn into coral creatures and whatnot, we'll still be top dogs. Dark Souls 2, same concept. Problem starts happening in Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, this is where the problems start, the Undead Cell. Because we start learning about the deep. At some point between Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, the Abyss is no longer the peaceful place where man can live. It's hold on, hold on. I'm going to challenge you because now I have questions. When you say challenge, right, like the, the Abyss is peaceful, I think back to Ulysseel in Dark Souls 1. Okay, think about how humanity exists. In the, in the abyss. Ulysseel. It depends on your pronunciation, but they pronounce it in the game as Ulysseel. I have more of a question than a question. 
Oh, but fair enough. There is a good DJ named Ula Seal. Yeah. It, there, what it could it be Ula Seal or Ula Seal. Both, both sound cool as shit. It, it's a language thing. The word uh, means something involving light. Uh, but like everything in Dark Souls is based off of real language like techniques and such. Anyway. And real myth, too. Uh, but, um... So, yeah, so, so, so you say the peaceful darkness that is the abyss, but what is the Ula Seal? Okay, so Dark Souls 1, the DLC, holy shit, almost died. Yeah. I'm about to die, actually. Nope, dead. Nope, they're not, I'm not Take dead. Look at that. Oh, no, bitch, I'm feeling strong. My balls are big. Take a shot. Uh, that dark uh, gets you. Hop! Uh, good. Woo! Fuck you. I like these berserk enemies. Anyway, go. Kill these fuckers. So anyway, so how do you say the peace, the peaceful? Okay, when I when I said peaceful, let me let me define my idea of peace, stable and with people like it's like wow. I forgot that you're I'm that. really sorry. I, I you know like Sam is saying a lot of cool things that I appreciate, but as I'm playing, there's a lot of things I want to talk about in the game. And one of the things I want to talk about right now, just to fucking, just not to dub, dub not to cut Sam off, because I really want to know what the hell he has to say, because Sam has a really lot of smart points about this goddamn game. But while you're playing this shit, just come to this little part right here, because you just run in this motherfucker and slap that bitch's fucking fat ass. And by bitch, this Rosie O'Donnell looking ass fat bitch right here. Never mind. This Rosie O'Donnell fat ass bitch. Don't, that is a treat. No, no, no. I'm talking about that fat bitch in between Dumb, the fire. I'm messing with you. You guys gotta stop messing with me. You're a tree. Eh. Oh, come the fuck <laughs> on. Oh, Why sorry. would you just put random barrel? Why would you put random barrels and they wouldn't explode? There we go. And it's funny as shit to see their bodies just fucking go one way. But yeah, so yeah, this part right here, if you just... You have at least like 16 firebombs from playing the fucking game. That, that was have good. some fun. Throw some firebombs. It... I mean, either way, even even in late game, like this is still, you should still do that because it makes this whole area a lot more um, enjoyable. Unlike in Bloodborne, where in dealing with large quantities of enemies requires you to uh, utilize, well, utilize the amazing combat engine and weapons that Bloodborne created, and then for some fucking reason, from soft went back to this shit. It's because mm -hmm. it... I'm, no, 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 no let, let's not humor me shitting on this goddamn game. Okay. okay. So Sam. You said that the abyss mm -hmm. was a very calm, peaceful place. I didn't say calm. I said peaceful. Okay, peaceful. And, and what I meant was stable. Well, what I meant was humanity. The, the counterpoint for lived. anybody, the counterpoint for anybody lighting themselves on fire, is you see the DLC. You see the abyss. This is it literally. You the see worst that disgusting. Case. You see that shit. Fuck that shit. No, see what? Because what, what, what I see when I saw the abyss was humanity in its purest state. There wasn't sentience, but it was survival of the fittest. It was disgusting and dark and scary. I would light myself on fire a thousand times to prevent that shit from happening. Are not, you kidding me? Not me. In my mind, what it was, it was, it was like watching cavemen existing in my village. But, like, the cavemen weren't cavemen. They were fucking dark, floating dick spirits. In Dark Souls, that's what the original state of And that was. is the world we were fucking with. Yep. But in my mind, that was... If... if that was the natural state of everything. It would still have been better than a life of slavery under the gods. Fair, but I guess I don't know. I can go. I'm Jewish. I, can, I got. I have biases. What can I, I say? I can now? go both ways, like a fucking confused high schooler. Yeah, but okay. So, but just take that into account. But, but at some point, that stopped being the case because these fuckers, Aldrich. So, so your opinion, that opinion that we just had right here, this back and forth, this that stopped. In Dark Souls 3. Yes. Because of the creation okay. of the Abyss. I mean, the Deep. The Abyss was, the deep. Okay. was turned into the Deep. Because they started breeding and creating monsters. And filled the Abyss with things that don't... Bear in mind. Things that aren't human. But Asshole. eat humans. And are still dark. Aldrich. Not just Aldrich. Just... The, the spell that they use here, the fucking things that the are... Null. Yeah, that eat people. That's pretty good the, spell. Yeah, oh, but yeah, but if you read it, and if you read it any, is terrifying. Of, any of Solvin's equipment, like things like, oh, now the, now in the uh, Boreal Valley, now in that is which is connected to the deep, you have, uh, like, weapons that have been gnawed by tiny insects that can eat through metal. Did I die? Oh, yeah. 
I jumped off the uh, thing. I'm not calling that a Dylan Sucko mirror, though. Okay, yeah. You, you I'm not. <laughs> okay, so anyway. But yeah, so in, in what you get is essentially the when people th always thought the Age of Dark was the Age of Man. And that's true up until Dark Souls 3. Because the Age of Deep means that the Age of Dark is no longer the Age of Man, but the Age of Things That Eat Man. So, but isn't that the age of man, though? So the age of man eats not a, man? No, no, no. Not man. Things that aren't man now eat man. And when in the age of dark, when it was just people, when it was just people being taught, it didn't matter if you could see. It didn't matter anything, because it just meant that everyone was at the same disadvantage. But now things have evolved in the deep. They don't need eyes. And they fucking love the taste of flesh. This... You look at the DLC. Go to the DLC. What do you see? The locusts, right? Yeah. They are supporters of the of the dark. They also believe in the uh, the dark abyss in the future. But they call it the feast because when the dark comes, they're gonna chow down on all men. They're the new top species. That would be the age of them. And I hate that. And we're the bottom of the food chain. I hate that. And because of that, we're, we are the food chain. Though. And you can tell also, there's there's actually something that backs that up in that. Every time you kill one of those locust guys, their biggest drop is going to be the soul of a brave warrior. It's not them. A, they ate a brave warrior. They wow. chow down on that motherfucker. Uh, so that's why this game has the third option. To just walk away? What it is is... No, no, no. So... What it basically is boiled down to is if in Dark Souls 1 they chose the Age of Dark because it was the natural path, Gwen unnaturally preserved the cycle. He said to himself, we're going to have the Age of Fire forever. And because of that, he created the system. If it went Age of Dark in Dark Souls 1, we might have had a chance, even if it was crazy. If it went Dark Dark Souls 2, we might have had a chance it was it, to go back to the natural way of things. By Dark Souls 3, it's too late for man. The world has moved on. An age of dark hmm. is no longer beneficial to man. Really? Holy other, shit. Other, something else is, the world's just, it's just like, now it's not, it's like if uh, dragons suddenly were the new t alpha predator and the age of dark was most beneficial to dragons. Well, that would suck. A, <laughs> new, a new species has moved on, has moved in, almost as if a new age has passed. The our age, age has passed. Our age has passed and by it's Dark Souls because 3. of Gwyn. Yeah. The age of dark being the oh, age of man. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a dick. Fuck Gwen, dude. Yeah, man. Fuck Gwen's Gwen. a fucking bitch. Yeah. But I mean, understand that we uh, would have also had to make that choice at some point. Where the age of dark would pass in some new age. Yeah, but like, at least we would then experience our age. Yeah, we would get a ch our chance in the light. Like, Gwen experienced his entire life age. And then uh, he fucked. We, he kept his age going and then fucked ourselves out of our time. Man, fuck Gwen. Yeah, that's where a lot oh, of shit. People... Wait, hold on. I thought I could walk up that for a second. I was yeah, gonna be right, surprised. Right. So, but so here's what it basically boils down to, and the offside, the, the 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 black church, they've realized this by now. Their deal is it's like, well, fuck it. We've been dealt a shit hand. We got a shit hand of cards. That looks like a summon sign. Actually. But since we are men, we are human. Even if you're hollow, hollowing is the primordial state of man. It's the natural state of man. And it is now that. Everything that is alive, what who's become the alpha dogs is not just man, it's the unkindled. It's those who cannot die, the hollows. They are now the top dogs, the alpha predators. And the hollows. The hollows, yes. They are the guys that are like, hey, we're here. We're queer. Get used to it. Bingo. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, to be frank, yeah, it's like, I mean, sure, they're natural, they're are kind of because of social connotations, people kind of associate hollows with being deceitful bastards, and they're not wrong. That sounds like me. And if you pick, if you go through the Lord of Hollows bit, as we'll see momentarily, you are being manipulated, but they are saying that oh, wow. the natural cleverness of man, the deceit of man, is not something we should shy away from. The bad things in life are not the things we should look down on, they're the things that we should... Like Odysseus tricking the Cyclops and such. It's like, it's some of the benefits of man are not just strength. It's also intelligence. It's also lies and trickery and deceit and things we normally associate as being bad things, but ancient civilizations saw as good things. So, basically what they come down to, what they, what they, what they come up and say is they're like, let's take the flame up and symbolically, instead of it, focusing on the gods, let's have an age of man under fire. 
Okay. Where, and that's basically their deal is pick it up, put it back down in a place and a time of our choosing. We can pick it up, and it'll be an age of dark, and we'll see how well man survives. We'll see how well we do. And this is the church of Londor. Yes. Londor, okay. the black church, which is, uh, according to some people, like Ben, who's a great theory, cra theory crafter, it's the belief that it's the church of Nido and the church of Velka and all these other dark churches that hid in the background. Like the curse, like the cursed things and some of the, like, heretics of the dark moon, all different, like, all these different groups coming together at the very end because none of them made bosses. None of them were, like, rose to power. They all ruled from the background and faded from people's memories. People think that's what the black church is. And there's some evidence for that with Arian Dell. Oh, Aldrich invaded you. Yeah, hold on. I'm just more concerned about this goddamn slug. I mean, you don't really, can't really use the thing you drop. Oh, I mean, I can't right now, but it's still, like, a completionist uh, idea. Yeah, you are absolutely completionist. <sighs> this shit's pretty annoying, actually. Yeah, Hodrix is a pain. No, no, no. Honest, Hodrick right here is not bad. Uh, God damn it. In my live stream, I don't know. I don't know if it was good enough, but in the swamp, in the swamp, you can summon Hodrick. Yeah. Hydric can kill everything. everything. Everything! It's incredible. It's disgusting. Like, Hydric at that point, I literally have a goddamn boner of a time just having him go through that entire swamp and kill everything. Because he is a, a neutral phantom, everything will target him when you're out of their target range. I love how there are his sides in Dark Souls 3. Which there is. is. It's, it's fun. I'm about to fucking die. And I, can I help my bone out? See ya, boy! Yeah, I was not about to deal with that. We didn't. We made a lot of progress at that point. Anyway, I'm gonna go piss. Sam, any final thoughts you had about the lore, uh, which I'm loving yeah. you making uh, right now? My go ahead. My final uh, bit on that lore that we'll cover is that because of that, all that stuff I just mentioned, Lore of Hollow's ending is probably the best ending because you get to see. Oh well, if we don't do so well in the Lord of Dark, well, it looks like it's Lord of. It's an age. It's not Lord, Lord of Dark. Age of Dark. If we don't do so well in that Age of Dark. Get to put down the fire again. Now it's an age of fire again. Oh, well, let's see how well we do. And then we can, like, use the age of fire, purify the dark, kill all the stuff, put it to, to pick it up. Oh, look, it's an age of dark of man. We basically, what it doesn't, it doesn't give us control over the world, but it does give us control over the cycle. As long as the hollow side, even if you're not in charge of it, even if they end up betraying you and throwing your ass into a pit with no bonfire, or a pit, or do the sea thing and lock you into a thing with a, with the bonfire. I've actually thought a lot about how hollows would fight against each other. Like, make you sit on a bonfire, kill your ass, isolate that bonfire from every other bonfire. You're basically trapped there forever. And that's kind of like something, a way that they operate, because it's all deceitful and betraying, and you're obviously being manipulated, and the moment you stop doing what the fucking, the fucking Londor side wants you to, they're gonna drop your ass like a bad condom. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it's still the fire would still be in the control of humanity and that means you no longer have to go through all of this bullshit that is true this, you, this, to this, go, to this is bullshit if you wanted to send yourself <laughs> and preserve the fire longer you don't have to go through a Dark Souls game at that point it would be in control of a launder side. If a launder guy wanted to cinder himself, he would literally be like, I'm going to go cinder myself. And like, okay, let's open the gate. And they open the gate, he jumps in the fire. Oh, look at that. We got another fucking... Well, the problem with that is, and the idea is, like, you need to have a strong soul to kill in the fire in the first place. Well, I mean, as the Lord of Hollows, you can literally gather up all the souls of, like, you can literally go about your daily life killing, like, people that betray you. Or, like, you are on a side that is dependent on you having a lot of souls. The focus would be to, like... For collective humanity. Can, can you? Could you pass off soul energy to another person? Yeah, that you could let them kill you and then come back. Oh, uh, I guess yeah. Yeah, I mean, just they would gain all your souls. They would by killing you, and then you just come back out from the bonfire. You basically have a society that's like exchange is violence. Your currency. Man, is... the whole the whole the whole world of Dark Souls is shit. Oh, it's it's not great, but they're also changing what's good and what's not good. Like I said, deceit in Dark Souls it, to one side, to one faction, is like they are like this is what, this is this is what a mitzvah is. This is what like a good deed is. Is it's not just like this is what the natural state of humanity. Is. So uh, uh. I mean, like I you know. It's no, like, I agree with you. I mean, like the plot of Dark Souls has just been. I mean, like things get. We, bad. Don't, we don't we don't have to discuss the plot of Dark Souls like. 
a lot of video game channels have made their profit off of Dark Souls 3 lore because even a lot of people are like, what the fuck is going on? This is a beautiful... I say beautiful, but then some asshole hammers me in the fucking back. Oh, god damn it. Hold on. No, no, no. This bitch. You want, you want to hit me, bitch? You want to hit me, bitch? Are you talking shit, bitch? You thought you had nice on me, bitch? Get fucked, bitch. Even with warmth. You don't fuck about warmth. So, you fucking with me? You fucking with me, boy? Ah! Ah! Welcome to Dark Souls 3 PvP! Oh. Son of a bitch! A fat woman! Oh! 